Okay, so I said that um, this is uh, the second time that we have this track in this conference and we're very glad to present uh, some of the speakers that are going to discuss with us uh, the presentations and I want just to let you know that the presentations were uh, reviewed by, by peers. This means that all of the presentation had a, 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 set, a high quality selection process and um, uh, I want to also thank you for all your patience during the uh, editing process. Uh, I know it's been a like, sometimes difficult part to get this camera ready uh, version for the track for the conference, but finally we're here and I hope you enjoyed the, the track. So, um, the first presentation uh, we're going to have is uh, about um, uh, well, the title is Using New Technologies to Understand Migratory and Ethnic Realities, Block Migraciones Usal, and is um, uh, from Nuria Al Alamo, Nicolás Stanek, Alberto del Rey, and Jose Manuel Fernández. So I want to ask you, Nicolai, to come, and I will ask you all of you to have around from 10 to maximum 15 minutes. And at the end of, the, uh, of this part, I mean, before the break, we will have a brief discussion. So you can just write out your questions or your, um, your comments so, uh, to all the presenters before the, the break. Okay? So, uh, Nico, can I come here? I can. Also, uh, 
like the, 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 the flow of information on those changes and on, on those um, uh, realities uh, is very intense, is very broad, and also is very biased. There is like huge normative bias that I, I would say. And also, um, it's very, very empirical. So we, we deal mainly, uh, like the, the, the theoretical course is it, not very, very developed, but, but we have a lot of data, a lot of information. So, um, our experience as, as teachers, as, as lecturers in, 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 migration, in migrations showed us that um, students like very much this, 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 this issues, this, this object, but sometimes the output, what they, what they learn, uh, is, uh, does not always match to, to, to the effort that we put in in when we when we teach, so we uh, like a group of of, uh, of teachers we uh, we we, uh, we propose like a new way, more a perspective way to 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 learn about those those reality and it realities, but and it was uh, by collaborating on a blog on a blog migration uh, social. I was said that there is no, we have no connection to internet, so I, I am afraid I can't show you this blog, but I have some, 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 uh, like some screens. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we don't have. Uh, no. We have the other presentation. Yeah. No. No. It's, it's, it's just video. Okay. So the main goal was. Uh, was to, to implement like an active and, and participatory teaching program to, 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 to teach the migration and ethnicities and like specific goals and or what we ex what what did we expect or what we expected from it was first that by preparing uh, the content for this blog students would not only acquire like, knowledge uh, related to migration but also would Will, would actively learn how to learn about migration. It was like our first first idea for this for purpose. Second, that uh, we we wanted them to adopt very 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 critical attitude towards sources about migration, sources of, of information and data, and we wanted them to learn by themselves how to evaluate this this uh, this data and how to recognize valid not biased information. Thirdly, we, we also expected them to learn how to uh, synthesize information and also and data and also how to communicate the knowledge to the, to, to, to the broader audience, not only to the professor but also to, to, to other people. So, so the blog was quite quite nice tool to, 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 uh, to implement this, this idea. And also, of course, we wanted them to, because in, in case of sociology, it, it's, it's a Big issue and, and challenge to learn to how to use basic uh, like um, digital te technology tools like like uh, Google Drive, video recorders, uh, video editors, and so on and so on. And uh, finally, we we wanted them to, to, to work in groups. So to, we wanted them to, to improve their capacity to to, to work in to work in groups. So uh, that there were three uh, stages of this. Oh well, uh, this project was was developed by, uh, by, uh, by professors who, who teach uh, who top courses related to migration in two degree courses in social work and in sociology, and also in, in three master uh, programs. And uh, there were uh, three stages. The first one, the first was uh, at the first stage. Students participated in the preparation of the website by selecting tools to, to be used, uh, deciding the content, the, the basic content uh, of, the, of the blog, and also creating groups uh, and distributing tasks. On the second uh, stage, they were gathering information, learning about sources of, of, of information, uh, how to process it, also, how to discriminate and classify those pieces of, of, uh, of information, uh, how to distinguish between uh, events and phenomenons, uh, and the uh, phenomenon and, and opinions, uh, and, so, uh, and so on and so on. 
And at the third uh, stage, they uh, were, was they were providing uh, the, the content for the for the uh, for the blog. And there were four types of, of content. First, the, the, there were news. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you the, 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 the blog, but but uh, well, you have a screen screenshot. Uh, they, they were they were following uh, several news. And, and they were selecting the most, the most important one, and they were making like a short, uh, short comment on it. And, and this, uh, this following was uh, along all, all the course. So, so that were like this, each student was 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 preparing uh, several comments on, on, on crucial issues uh, related to migration that appeared uh, in, in media. Uh, the second one. The second one, or the, or, or, or the second uh, type of content, is uh, they uh, they were uh, in charge of preparing a glossary of migration and, and ethnic relations terms. So uh, each of them received uh, like two, three concepts that they have had to develop and uh, using literature that, that, that they were uh, in, in charge of, of, of finding. And uh, they had to do, to do just like encyclopedia of, of migration. So and and it was quite useful and quite original because the, the, there's nothing like this in the, uh, at least uh, in in, the, in on, on on internet. So so it was quite quite and it is quite quite original and also it is quite nice uh, input uh, of of our of our uh, of our uh, effort and. Uh, on the on the on the um, on the, uh, the, the the third the third content or type of content was there were essays they they, they had to 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 to, 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 to pass the, 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 the course they, they, they had to prepare an essay and the best one uh, after editing they, they, they were published so they had to be prepared in the in the in the the way that broad audience uh, would understand what is um, the, 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 the concept and so on. And the last part uh, was, uh, and we uh, implemented this last year. Uh, uh, in spite of the of the essay, they could do like very short video. We call video blog, and they just could uh, make make this kind of of. of of, uh, of, of product, if we could show briefly a uh, video yes, yes. We will hear just, or we will see just, 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 just a very small part, but just to see how they, 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 they learned how to use like there's several um, tools to make it so Uh, I would say. 
So firstly, students, they, they have like very hard time to understand what, what it's all about. They, they are so used to, like, to this classical way of, of, of receiving classes. I mean, that, that, that there is a theoretical part and also some exercises. So they, they didn't understand uh, all the dynamics. So they had to learn that there is like, another way of, 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 of learning, more active. Uh, it's very students had, had very, very hard time to understand, or they had trouble to understand that they are in charge of, of looking for uh, material, looking for information, and, and in charge of, of learning how to use several tools. So they, they have to, to, to work on, on their own with our, with our support, but, but they, they, they were more autonomous than, than, than in other classes. And, uh, but little by little, they, they, they were just uh, getting used to this new approach, and uh, finally uh, they, they, they seem quite quite happy about this this class. And uh, I think that the, the, like, the, 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 the main the main like breaking point was that uh, they under they understood that, that all this product or all that every product they are that they are, they are doing that they are. They are they are, they are all, 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 those, uh, all those materials they are, they are producing um, uh, are uh, uh, will be seen and, and read by a uh, broader audience. So they, uh, it is not only for the professor. So they, they feel like more responsible, and and, and it, I think it was a like breaking point in this in this process. And uh, I think that's it. Thank you very much. We will continue connecting with the next, and you can remain here, so at the end you can make the question. So the next one is Patricia, I guess, yes, Patricia Sanchez and David, Carlos and Francisco, but it's presenting Patricia Sanchez. Uh, the title of the presentation is uh, Adoption of Social Media for Scientific Communication by PhD Students, the case of the PhD in Education in the Knowledge Society. Good afternoon, my name is Patricia and um, this paper is a um, pilot survey. Uh, so it's a concrete case of education in the knowledge society because um, this is a study uh, made with the uh, doctoral students of this program. So what is the context? Uh, this research it's about uh, the use of the social media, social networks, some social networks for scientific communication or, or dissemination. And um, science communicators only uh, use um, networks and social media for communicate the, uh, this work, uh, the science and papers and everywhere. Uh, so we need to know um, what is the factors uh, that uh, the students or um, researchers in a new stage of uh, his, uh, his career and uh, why or how they use the, the social media and so this is the, the because of this uh, pilot proof. This is our um, research question. Um, to what extent are Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram and YouTube adopted by doctoral students for scientific communication? This is the four social network that we study. 
only these four social networks. So uh, the theoretical, theoretical framework is uh, the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology, you doubt. Um, because this theory includes uh, some factors that uh, explain uh, how is the intention of use and the real use of the technology in general context. So we, we are uh, going to apply uh, these theories uh, to the science communication and to the use of social networks for the science communication in the students in this case. So we are uh, to study how uh, are the factors, where, um, what are the factors that configure the adoption and the real use of the social networks. This is the model. Uh, this is a, a simplified model of three um, factors: uh, the performance expectancy, effort expectancy, and social influence. And uh, this is uh, the model that we use for this study and uh, the, use, uh, in the intention of use as moderate, uh, mediated and use real and the moderate uh, gender and age. This model says that there is an indirect conditional effect of these variables, mm, performance expectancy, for expectancy and social influence, on the real use of social media and is mediated by the intention of use and moderated by gender and age. So, in this model we have three uh, hypotheses, uh, one for each uh, variable. So the first hypothesis is uh, performance expectancy influence positively uh, in the intention of use and this creates a positive indirect effect over their real use. And uh, it's moderated by gender and age, uh, it's stronger in men and younger people. The second hypothesis is the four expectancy uh, influence negatively the intention of use, and this creates a negative and indirect effect over the real age. So it's moderated by gender and age, it's among women and older people, opposite uh, the uh, last. So the third uh, hypothesis is social influence that influences positively, in this case, in the intention of use and is a positive indirect effect over the real use. So it's moderated gender and age because it's among, uh, stronger in women and in older people. What is the methodology we find is uh, we made a survey in the students of the program from 1995 approximately, uh, 180 students and uh, 40 students answered the survey. This is the sample, uh, graphic help example. Um, men is a 40%, women is a 60%, and the uh, Branch of age is between uh, approximately 26 to 55. Uh, the, all the students are more or less in this range. Um, we, the reality uh, was calculated uh, uh, alpha combat with the alpha combat, and uh, the measure was uh, a liquid scale of, uh, of five points and other with the cotonous response and some variables uh, socio-demographics. The results of this study is um, we have a total adoption rate of all the four social networks. This is an average on 40.5% and if we see the indie adoption for each network. Facebook is uh, the most adopted social network with 62.5% with, um, uh, and uh, Twitter, YouTube and Instagram with a break or with a difference uh, between Facebook, Twitter and YouTube, Instagram considerably and uh, 
the, so the social network adoption is um, more or less good for a total group, but individually uh, there are some differences. The frequency of access to these networks are uh, Facebook is the first one, and Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, um, more or less uh, in the same. But uh, YouTube and Instagram is um, the less frequency for these students. But in the intention of, of use, there is some movements about uh, these networks because Twitter is the first one and Facebook, Instagram and YouTube are more curated. This is the moderate mediation analysis, the resource more, more presumably. Um, this, uh, in this study, uh, we, are, we made a moderate mediation analysis for each variable and uh, each variable for the four social networks and in, in this case all the results were uh, significant for all the networks Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube have a results uh, significant uh, effort expectancy is the same case uh, we made a study for the four networks and in the case of social influence, the same. Um, the results, all the results were significant for the indirect effect to um, the indirect effect of the variable over the real use with the mediation of the intention of, of use. So the conclusions of the pilot proof is um, for the first one. Hypothesis, <clears throat> we have um, results that were significant in all of them, so we um, take care that performance expectancy, as uh, the model says, you doubt, is a predictor of the use of social networks, and this indicates uh, that the decision to adopt or not adopt uh, a network is conditioned by uh, individual um, conviction. Um, gender and age, in this case, um, were moderators in only in uh, young women. In the second hypothesis, uh, the indirect uh, effect, negative effect, was significant, so we can say that the effort expectancy can be considered a predictor, in this case, of negative use, of the social networks and uh, the general age world um, was stronger in young women. For the first hypothesis, the resource is the same case, they were significant, so we can consider that social influence is predictive of the use of these networks and um, also the moderators of gender and age was stronger in young women. Okay, this is a link to the reference and tables of indirect effect because it was uh, enormous. So <laughs> here is the downloading for the for the files and that's all. Thank you. Um, next presentation uh, is entitled the University Facing the Challenges of Climate Change. Okay, this is your Anne Marie Benedict. Yeah? <laughs> okay, because there are many authors. <laughs> you can you can probably tell about it. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me check presentation is this one. Right. Yes. I'm Marie Balagir from the Department of uh, Didactics of uh, Mathematics and Science. And I'm going to present uh, a project that we've launched, uh, launched last year in our uh, department, which is, titled, uh, which is titled University Facing the Challenges of Climate Change. And it's a virtual seminar for climate change education. So first of all, 
why did we uh, launch a um, virtual seminar on climate change? Uh, most of the members of our team are actual scientists, so we have a general concern on uh, one of the main env environmental issues the society is facing today, which is climate change. So, um, ever since the Industrial Revolution, uh, we as humans have been uh, pumping greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere, mainly carbon dioxide, and these, uh, these emissions have been building up in the atmosphere, as you can see in the, in the diagram, it's a comparison between the pre-industrial atmosphere and the actual atmosphere, and um, in effect, this, uh, the accumulation of these greenhouse gases is altering the um, the, the global uh, energy budgets of the, plan of the planet and is causing some unprecedented, unprecedented increases in global temperatures. So, um, uh, some of the side effects of global warming are, uh, for example, uh, melting ice sheets, sea level rise, ocean, acidifi ocean acidification, coral bleaching, those are only one of uh, some of the impacts that are um, happening and are still um, ongoing, no? So if we want to uh, revert the, the changes or the alterations we have been causing in the global climate, we have to address a number of challenges. So um, one of the main questions, or one of the issues that, have, that has been raised lately is the, uh, is the question of whether or not if it's too late to uh, act. So uh, as uh, the climate models are getting better, the urgency for action is, coming, is becoming more evident. Another issue is uh, who's responsible for climate change and who has to uh, pay for um, the damage that has been done. Another recent uh, phenomenon that has been uh, highlighted by some studies is how do we uh, sustain interest in climate change as uh, we are getting bombarded by information on uh, climate change and it's in some cases, although this might uh, one might think that this might lead to more uh, action, and in uh, many cases it is the opposite, that it, uh, people lose interest. And um, one important, and I consider the main challenge, is how um, do we mainstream the solutions that have been developed and the evidences are clear. The solutions are also uh, more or less designed and developed, but the remaining issue is how do we put this into practice especially given the, urge, the urgency of the, what we now call climate crisis. And the last challenge is uh, actually the one where our team wants, uh, where we want to make our contribution, and it is how do we effectively communicate um, these issues and the solutions to the general public. So, um, as, our, um, as has been indicated by the United Nations Framework for Climate Change, uh, climate change education uh, can play a crucial role in a, um, climate change uh, mitigation and adaptation. So a call from the general public for a better climate uh, communication and education has become more um, prevalent in the last year, especially through movements such as the School Strike for Climate that was initiated by Greta Thunberg. Um, this movement has been um, spread through social media and has also reached uh, Spain. Um, in the case of Spain, most of the public uh, debate around climate change is driven by social media and one of the issues is the fact that uh, social media have been plagued with uh, misleading and false information and it is, this is slowing down the response and uh, this um, uh, can be a dangerous issue. No? So the university uh, can play a key role in uh, coordinating climate change education and communication. As a matter of fact, the university is in a unique, in a unique, uh, unique position to do this as it can tackle the problem from different angles. As an um, academic institution, uh, through research and knowledge, um, the university has the capacity and the possibility to create, um, or to communicate um, an accurate description of the facts and evidences of climate change and also um, it has the possibility to um, elaborate and to promote a multidisciplinary approach as many of the solutions that have been proposed for climate change as, uh, need uh, this uh, multidisciplinary approach. Um, as an educational institution, um, the, um, the university has the capacity to teach, to teach new generations the necessary skills to, uh, to face this, uh, these issues. And it is important that um, the university uses this 
this opportunity to innovate the way of, uh, of how to teach these subjects to the students as they need like uh, specific skills that um, prepare them to adapt to this uh, rapidly changing reality. And finally, as a community, the university can um, 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 involve the local community in the issue and can also uh, raise awareness among the general public. And um, the university also have the, has the um, should like um, communicate climate change uh, as a um, uh, through a, as a positive through positive. Through optimism, sorry. So um, uh, students are encouraged to take action. So the um, one of the spe uh, special characteristics of climate change education is precisely that it can uh, build bridges between natural and social science, because uh, many of, most of the causes and consequences of uh, social, of, sorry, of climate change are studied by natural science. But on the other hand, the solutions and actions. Uh, need to be studied by social science. So the university can be um, one of the um, institutions that precisely builds this bridge between natural and social science. Because uh, progress can only be made and will only be, uh, solutions will only be effective if this uh, multidisciplinary approach is, um, is implemented. So um, in, our research, uh, in our research team as an effort to um, to uh, put climate change education on the uh, agenda of the university, we launched this um, uh, cycle of virtual seminars. The initiative was uh, we, we built on a, on, a, on a previous cycle of seminars we launched the year before, which, which and uh, the first uh, initiative we didn't use social media, we just uh, organized uh, seminars in the media lab of the University of Salamanca, where we invited uh, experts on the issue. And we were we involved the local community to have a, to um, promote this this debate on climate change. But this year or last year, um, to be precise, more, um, precise uh, we uh, decided to film the seminars and the, and the, those uh, by the um, television of the University of Salamanca. And those seminars were then edited and um, up, uploaded to YouTube. As you can see. Sorry. As you can see in the image, there were seven seminars, uh, seven speakers, and uh, seven hosts. And um, each uh, seminar was focused on one of the aspects of climate change. And we tried to mix uh, natural and social science. So the objective, uh, the main objective to uh, for the seminar were to create awareness among the local community, uh, to discuss the causes and consequences of climate change from a scientific perspective. Uh, to debate over the different possible responses and to inform and mobilize society in a coordinated and coherent way. To do so, we uh, invited a number of experts from around the country, each of, uh, each of which had a specific um, area of expertise. And in each seminar, um, the local community was given the opportunity to interact with the, with the experts to promote a, a dialogue between uh, the, the scientists and the general public. So the, um, the videos were adapted to the YouTube, form, to the YouTube uh, format. So they were divided in uh, three different parts. First, we made a short and simple interview to attract the viewer's attention. The, um, we had the idea to ask the same questions to all the different speakers, so that we could have like the, um, a different opinion from different perspectives about the same questions. Then, um, if the viewers' um, interest was, if the viewers interested, he could uh, continue watching the video where there was a 10 to 20, 10 to 20 minute talk, a little bit um, inspired on the TED Talk format, which is very popular in the US, and. Um, Afterwards, the, um, the audience was given the opportunity to ask uh, questions to the speaker and there was a uh, room for a little bit of a dialogue or debate between the audience and the speaker. Um, all the videos were uploaded to the general YouTube channel of the University of Salamanca, which has over uh, 7,000 um, followers. So the reason why we used social media this year was to broaden our impact and to have like a wider um, range of the, of the same effort uh, from last year. Uh, another reason 
why we um, launched this seminar is because we have um, a general um, commitment to, pr to provide um, good quality educational resources, resources on climate change in Spanish. Because when we, the, the year previous to the seminars, we um, designed and developed a massive open online course, which was uh, titled, as you can see above, which was focused on climate change education, but for primary and secondary teachers. So when we designed this uh, MOOC, um, we found that there was an alarmingly low number of uh, good quality educational resources uh, for climate change in Spanish as we uh, did some research and we also used Google Trends, as you can see here, where we could see there is um, most of the resources are only found in English and this could be a barrier for uh, especially in primary and secondary education. So the um, seminars could also, not as much for uh, primary and secondary uh, school teaching, but uh, at university level, the, um, the seminars can also be used as a teaching tool uh, in a, in, at, at the university. So as a conclusion, we could, um, uh, we could see that uh, the use of uh, digital media and um, when, we lost, uh, when we launched our, circle, our cycle of seminars was positive as it could be a link between education, research and community. At educational level we could see that um, we could uh, help to improve um, multidisciplinary resources, resources for teaching at the academic level, the um, seminars were an opportunity to create a dialogue, dialogue and to have a future collaboration between different disciplines. And for the community, um, the virtual seminars uh, can be a way to uh, um, increase awareness among the local community. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, the next presentation is uh, the Conversas project, where does science go in Portugal? An experiment of transmedia and storytelling. It's, uh, it's presented Patricia again. Hello, again. Uh, because mm, researchers, there are a difference 
of the people that are working in science or technology in the, in the country. And in Spain, uh, 200 more or less of people, but in Portugal, uh, it's uh, 8,900 of uh, 89,000 of people, and there's a big difference. And the budget of um, we don't have uh, information of this year, so this is the um, 270. Yeah, um, 3,000 more or less for Portugal and uh, 307,000 7, for Spain, so um, it's a big difference. And um, we, we, in the Eurobarometer, there are some days interesting um, because the level of interest in science and technology in Portugal is the 50 uh, percent. And in Spain, it's more or less uh, 17, 16 percent. Okay, there is um, more or less uh, the difference is big, more big. And this is the Conversas project, and this is the branding. Uh, it's in Portuguese. Para onde vai a ciencia en Portugal was the title, and we. Um, we ask this uh, question to some people in Portugal and we made a difference about uh, profiles, some profiles and some um, topics for, uh, to ask this question. The project um, it's a transmedia storytelling experiment and we need to know um, what people think about these topics and what people think and what people um, say about this because it's not the same thing that what people think and what people say. <laughs> and we ask um, what is the future, the future for all the topics that we ask. And uh, the spectrum results of the project is now a uh, work in progress, uh, is to give visibility uh, to the importance of reflecting uh, of the, on the wall of science sector, what is the future, what is the opportunities, what are the possibilities and what is the ways that we need to work in. And um, the objective of the progress is uh, to know what are the terms, the topics and the concepts that most concepts the profiles involve in science and technology area for the coming years. And this is the eight uh, topics that we uh, extract for the for the study, the study, um, academic career, evolution system, open science, financing, publication systems, scientific communication, scientific policy, and public of science. This is the five profiles for for the project. One is a researcher and teacher, journalist and communicator. A PhD student, politician, and magazine editors. So um, the channels for the, uh, the story for the transmedia conversion of all the contents in a story are this: the website, what is the base of the project, video, podcast, social media, interviews, and photography. Each of the profiles. Uh, tells her story in one of these channels. And uh, we made, uh, the methodology, we made a qualitative uh, study and uh, analysis, and we made a uh, discourse analysis, and uh, this is conditioned by the country in this case, in, in Portugal, by the school tour, uh, general academic like, training of uh, a lot of variables that we we can see that are influencing the people, and uh, we create a system of codes 
for uh, all these thematic areas and for make and content analysis, qualification and um, results about this qualification. Uh, the steps for the, for the analysis were well, obtain a story information for the people uh, with videos and similar things, transcribe all the contents, short information, and encode information with human qualifiers uh, and with some uh, codes concrete. Integrate information, uh, the last step. Okay, this is the phase one, uh, researchers and teachers, because uh, this is a work in progress, so this is the first uh, step for the five profiles that we have in this project. Researcher and teacher, we made 12 interviews with this question, where is science going in Portugal? This is an open question uh, when we ask uh, the people for this, uh, for, for this question, they can say everything and uh, open totally. And this is the, um, the universe for both uh, researchers from the University of Bahia Interior and this is the um, channel video. And the ocho, eight topics was detected uh, in the conversation. Uh, in the resource, we see we saw that um, not uh, the eight topics was um, was treated by the by the researchers. So we we um, we analyzed the topics, the concepts, and the sentiment of uh, each. This and the results, uh, more or less, this is the sentiment, general and total sentiment of all the interviews, the negative questions uh, and concepts and qualification was uh, 65%, the positive uh, 34%, this more negative than positive in general, and the uh, Time for um, each topic was in this table, and the most uh, important for people is in positive communication and scientific dissemination and academic career. But uh, negative is <laughs> the publishing system and academic career is, um, are the more negative topics for these researchers. The concepts or concrete concepts classified by feelings in the in, in this figure we can, we can see some concepts that are the most uh, repeat by the researchers, divulgation, in positive development or new methods, social networks or teamwork, uh, in positive but in negative, economic crisis, state financing, mass in cost, precarious contracts, uh, some of things are more negative. Um, these are uh, some examples, uh, I think I ha we can see very well in the screen, but um, this is the total topic, the, the relation in the timing of, um, of the discourse of the researchers in these topics. And this is the total sentiment uh, by negative and positive about the uh, same concepts that we extract from the discourse. This is by interview, uh, we can't see anything, but this is a figure uh, we can make an um, imagination because um, this is the figure um, by interview, by topic and by time. So the conclusion for the study was a um, positive feeling is uh, 34%, negative feeling is 65%, so there is more negative than positive. In researches, only six or the, of the eight topics was discussed, uh, publication, system financing, academic career, open science, scientific communication and scientific policy. In the positive sentiments, the principal preoccupation of our uh, scientific communication and academic career. The concepts uh, are dissemination, 
development new methods, open access social network, teamwork and university support. And in the negative sentiments, the most, uh, com the most commented topics are publication, financing and academic career. And the concept is cost, monopoly of magazines, state financing, economic crisis, precarious contract and difficult beginnings. And in the both positive and negative, only uh, two topics that was, were discussed, academic career and financial, financiation. So um, we have um, some uh, negative topics that are more commented by in the positive topics are um, less, less time for the discussion. So what are uh, our next steps? We continue with the following phases of the project. The rest of the profiles uh, we are working on and the rest of the channels. Um, there is a version of, the, of the, this project uh, in Spain. And when we have made uh, the version in, F in Spain, we can compare Spain and Portugal. So uh, this is the example of the web of the project. This is a web, by, web page uh, for agglutinate all the channels. And this is a making of, little making of the project in the University of Beira Interior. Countries. 
and they came with many different forms of knowledge. They lost or they were forced to abandon their country, so they came to Europe. But it doesn't mean that they were poor or they were not educated. So some of them are architects, for example, or they are engineers, teachers. Some of them are store owners, others have nothing at all, no education, nothing. They came and they have many different ages, many different bitter experiences. Some of them suffered abuse or torture. Some of them lost everything. Others are only still waiting for coming back to their country. So the question is, how can we make a, a course for this extremely wide audience? This is something really, really difficult. At the beginning, we could think, OK, we can make a course. Uh, we can make, for example, a test with objective questions, thousands of them, with three, four different answers. The problem is that uh, we also should take care of the teacher profile. So the teachers of this course that came from this uh, Lube University, one of our partners, uh, they wanted uh, to create a tutoring system with a subjective evaluation. They wanted to be close somehow to these refugees. So we cannot make exactly something uh, like an objective test or an, an objective uh, material there. So we need to create something for the teachers to know as much as possible from these students or refugees in this case. So very, very difficult task. Uh, also, we have very specific conditions. The teachers were working in this system using Bloom's taxonomy that categorizes and orders thinking skills. And in particular, with this Lauren Anderson Revis, Bruce Taxonomy, they start from remembering, understanding, in this order, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and finally, creating. So we have to create a task that involves all of these skills. So very tight conditions for a very wide audience, which is something very difficult to create, as I said. So, what we did is a model, which is an adaptive model, and the course is based in this adaptive training path, I'm going to explain, explain the figure a little bit now, that allows the students to follow their own and personal itinerary according to their needs and knowledge. So in this figure we have uh, six, these six uh, characteristics of this Bloom's taxonomy, starting in remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, so, at the beginning, remember, it is uh, the questions there are objective questions with three, four different answers. And depending on the answers of the students, of these refugees, they could go directly to the second step, understand, or they can uh, be forced to, to answer more questions. Not only one, two, three, or four, so on. With a maximum of six in this case. This is our model, but it would be more or less understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create, they have less questions there because there are less options. For example, in create, it is only a word that they have to do an essay, they have to do a document, and it is something a little bit advanced there about their own business, about the ideas that they have. It is supposed that when they go to that level, that level sorry, uh, they have answered correctly a lot of different questions or tasks. So we created uh, this, this model, uh, this other partner from Catalonia, uh, they implemented an application, so soon in the presentation I'm going to show you some images from the, from the, from the platform. And that's types from the feedback, we learned that recognizing their prior expertise is vital for the engagement. Thus, we give participants different choices per chapter, it is what I said before, okay? So they can either start from the easy questions in this first level. They can choose to... This one up there, it is a key question. If you can answer that question, then you can go to the next level. So what I mean here is that these students can start from there directly if they think they are, that they have enough knowledge to, to answer that question, or they can start before. 
So is what I'm saying here. Start from these questions, or they can choose to start with this final task. Even if they find, if they decide to start in the final task, maybe they can overestimate their expertise. So the model allows them to go back and answer two or three questions, easier questions, and then uh, go further in the in the course. At the levels of apply, analyze, and evaluate. Participants are required to seek partners to discuss and compare their answers, which is something also good for them. So, so far, we are solving the problem of refugees with different backgrounds, because in our model they can follow different paths adapted to their personal profile. And we are also solving, because we include these categories, teacher requirement of a personal and close tutoring system with the refugees. However, we still need to engage refugees, since some of them are not willing to start or finish the course without a clear motivation. So, in this case, the Tivaskila University, or group there, are experts in certification, so they suggested uh, to include some of these, of these elements. Storytelling, for example. So, the platform has a backstory where participants become experts, the experts, and uh, join the network of hosts for new refugees. Uh, right now, I should say that uh, we are working on that, so refugees are already working in the platform. The thing is that we don't have enough data to do a um, serious analysis for uh, sending it here, but I can tell you what is happening, and it is very motivating for, for them because uh, they feel that they had a lot of difficulties coming here. So they are very happy of helping other refugees that came later. So we are having good success with this. So they tell and upload their digital arrival story, their pitch, their marketing strategy, and how they will address the pains in their receiving country, their business details, if they started one. All of that uh, can be uploaded in the platform. Then uh, we are also including some standard application elements, like an avatar, for example, that allow refugees to participate in a personalized model without having to reveal their identity. This is, by the way, another thing that we have to take care of a lot. Some of them are very afraid of revealing well, who they are. And some of them don't know so much about computer or security with data and all of these things, so they, they feel comfortable if they, if they are sure that this information is not revealed. And for example, uh, we have here an image. This image is uh, an example. This is uh, started from the platform itself with the avatar and some elements there. Another example of the platform design here, a picture with some badges there. These element badges are awarded for a variety of achievements and purposes, a category for all player orientations, for example, community builder for those who give a lot of very good peer feedback, innovator for those whose stories show great originality, bridger for those who share an in-depth view of difference between the receiving countries and countries of origin, adapter for those who found a diverse path from one in his country of origin, so you can see here that these badges are oriented to, to the specific experience of these, uh, these refugees. And well, in order to become what we say a wizard, five badges and a special final challenge badges are required. So yeah, as I said, uh, we are having success with this. They, they like it a lot. Uh, points and leaderboards, we use it also. Leaderboards are motivated in two ways, on a personal level, it allows refugees to keep track of their progress and to make time for the cause within their many obligations. On a group level, the progress of one encourages the other to continue, and it also helps them to find colleagues who are working on the same chapter, so they can team up for collaborative tasks. And this is something that they like a lot, and we have some of them that are friends, that were not friends before, for example. And points and leaderboards are expected to motivate achievement-oriented participants in particular. Okay, I think I finished. Uh, another image of the platform. The core of the platform is Moodle, by the way, so maybe you can 
can see some common elements there. And well, here uh, we can see this Moodle uh, style uh, image. Uh, you can see in grey questions that are not still open. Uh, this is because of the of the adaptive model. Okay, since they didn't finish uh, questions from the previous level, they are not allowed to answer questions that are more difficult. Another image because we are short of time. I'm going to tell so much about it. So, our conclusions, uh, we have created an active model that is implemented in a transnational course for refugees in the European Union. We have also created an environment for including gamification techniques in the course in order to improve refugees' motivation. And we have described this, uh, the platform with Moodle where cars have been implemented, including the whole active model and gamification techniques. And of course, I'm looking forward for the next team conference for showing the results with the numbers and the success. I hope we will be successful here of this, this experience. And thanks for attention. Thank you very much for all the presenters. We have gone through very nice presentations. Beginning from um, uh, Nuria de Lam, who made a presentation about the use of, uh, sorry, from Miko Stanek, uh, who made a presentation about how to use ICTs to solve problems, and other presentations like Patricia's uh, about the use and adoption of uh, social media. Um, also, uh, the one that's Anne Marie Balivu, is it okay here? Your last name, Patrick, here? Okay. About this creation of this virtual seminar to educate and communicate climate change. And also, the, another presentation of Patricia of uh, Transmedia Storytelling, when she ran a qualitative study with discourse analysis and interviews to uh, uh, see how uh, the public science is going on in, in, in Portugal. And finally, this very interesting also presentation about um, this refugee challenge in education and in learning and this educational model. So now uh, I would like to open some period to uh, for questions uh, for any of them. Uh, so just please raise your hand and we will they will answer you. <laughs> no, all at the same time, please. <laughs> yes, of course. You can try with make up. I can, oh, yeah. I can question to Patricia uh, about uh, the first, the first um, presentation, and was it very, very, I would say, technical question about this something, something technique, something framework for this um, survey, and because I think it would be nice to know. How, how did you approach this, this this issue? Because it's quite I mean uh, it, it, it's quite difficult for really to follow, uh, especially for all the former students. So um, could you like, develop more on, on, on this issue, please? Uh, the study was a pilot study. So this the case of this program of doctoral. Uh, so uh, we take all the students matriculated in the program, uh, 180 of the students uh, from um, 1995 to 218, more or less. Uh, so all the students matriculate in the program. So we take um, with Qualtrics, we made the survey and we sent the survey to all the students. So we um, received 40, 40 uh, answers of the students. So, because it's a pilot study for a last 
more big study. This uh, the, the sample was all the students, and we uh, take the 40. Uh, we need uh, 30 to 50 students uh, answer. So it's so yes. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question uh, for Anne-Marie. Uh, <laughs> I just wonder if you have compared or are planning to compare uh, <laughs> the performance of your virtual seminar on climate change with another offline seminar that you already have or you might have in the future or that other universities have. I mean, to yeah. compare the two yeah. modalities of so um, at this stage we haven't done that, no, because um, when we launched the first cycle we didn't expect to have a funding sort of project for the next one, so we didn't do any performance test, not on the first one and on the next one. We are doing a perform. we have a tested performance of the MOOC, which is now being published, in process of being published, which is different, it's an, uh, also digital media, but not social, social media, so it's there we have uh, looked at how um, the um, how people improve their um, general um, uh, knowledge on climate change before and after the after the course after the MOOC, but not for we have we haven't done any comparison uh, between the different types of which would be interesting and also at the, since at the moment we're trying to publish this other study we haven't made any effort in like searching in the literature on previous. So I can't really uh, <laughs> provide uh, any day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need more, maybe more time and more money to, to find out. Okay. I have another question for Sasha. Um, I was wondering if uh, if you notice any difference in the um, in, in, in the region of the asylum seeker refugee uh, with regards of the, uh, how they face this e educational model. I mean, there, probably there are some refugees that are coming from, I don't know, Syria or Middle East who are uh, Muslim and others, I don't know, from Venezuela or from Latin America. I mean, there are different kinds of languages, backgrounds and, and um, religions. So that doesn't make any um, difference in, in the, in the Facing this, uh, the, the educational model that you are testing? Indeed. Yeah, of course. There, there, there are many differences. And actually, well, the problem here uh, at the beginning is that this course is, is, is volunteer. Okay. So uh, sometimes uh, we find that uh, these refugees, the ones that have uh, more higher education, <coughs> they, they, they want to do the course, even if they know already most of the contents, but they still think that it is good for them. So at the very beginning, the first problem we have is, uh, and that is because we introduced this gamification technique, because we wanted uh, to attract uh, these refugees that, uh, maybe the ones that need it the most. Yeah. So about the origin, actually we don't have any from Latin America. They are from Africa or from Europe, uh, Eastern Europe. So I don't know if in the future, because we wanted this to be, I mean, th there are legal issues right now about uh, doing it open and because the governments want to have control of this kind of thing. But in the future, we want, we want to do it open. Of course, we want to go further. Probably we will have people from other countries. But uh, on the countries that we have already, the, 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 the difference uh, is, is more related to the, to the, to the education that's over there again. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. I, I have a final, final question to Miko. Um, it's about your, uh, your blog. Um, that's nice because we work very close to each other. I didn't know about the blog <laughs> until I, I, I read the presentation. Uh, just, I was wondering if, are you planning to include uh, social media strategies within the blog for your, student to, your students to manage uh, social media, for example, um, um, 
persuade them to use like Twitter or Instagram account in order to feed those accounts and, and connect up those social media accounts to your blog. So in order to make it more like interactive or more like, uh, are, are you planning to use them? I, I did once with my students and it was very nice. I asked them to use Twitter to, to, to work with them for class and you know, that was a very good experience. So are you planning to do that? Um, yeah, uh, actually we, we, we've got uh, a Twitter account. We don't, we, we don't have uh, Facebook, but we, we have a Twitter account, but um, there's one professor uh, who, who takes care of it. Uh, and the, the reason is that, um, I mean, the, 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 the content that, that is published is also uh, announced by, by, by uh, on, on, in, on, on this Twitter account, but, uh, but we, as professors, we are, we are managing it. Uh, and the reason of it is that, uh, at least in sociology degree, Twitter is not the most popular media. Uh, I, I don't know how it is in communication, but, but Twitter is something for old and boring people. For old people. <laughs> yes. so, so probably <laughs> we should use Instagram. Yes. Um, but but <laughs> I think it's quite, quite a good idea to try to, to make more, yeah, more, make it, like, um, to, to target them uh, through this, this, uh, these tools. But, Twitter and, and we and we are also we will um, encourage them uh, to, to follow uh, this 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 uh, this account and they, they, they are just they, they are not very interested in so so I think it's not I mean maybe this Instagram today would be a better idea. But I don't know. Well, so that's it. Great. So we'll have a break of oh, uh, twenty two minutes because <laughs> we are a little late but it's okay to drink something we'll be back here at six thank you